Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin' here and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be teaching you three super easy popular scope effects for your Valorant montages or any montage in general really. First person shooter, as long as it's got a scope in it, CSGO, Call of Duty, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're not going to be using any plugins so it's completely free other than a Creative Cloud subscription in After Effects. Just before we get started, head down to the description, you'll see the link for my Discord server, join it. We'd love to have you over there, we've got lots and lots of brand new and aspiring editors as well as some very experienced ones who'd love to help you out. And while you're down there, you'll see the links to my other social media. Drop us a follow on all of those to get behind the scenes content as well as stay updated with the channel. So let's check out my channel for lots of other edits, montages, editing tutorials. I'm sure you can find something you'll be interested in. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. So for today's video, we're going to be using Adobe After Effects, as I've already mentioned. So what you're going to have to do is obviously open up After Effects, create a brand new composition, match the height and width to the resolution of your clips. So mine are at 1440p. Yours will probably be at 1080, so that's why it's preset in 1920 by 1080. I'm going to be changing mine to 2560 by 1440 as you can see because that is the native resolution of my monitor and the resolution that I recorded my clips at. I'm going to change my frame rate to 60 FPS because that's what I recorded my clips at as well. And I'm going to make sure that my background color is black. You don't want it to be any other color. You want it to be solid black. If you have a weird color, it's going to stand out. It's going to look terrible. So make sure you've got a solid black. You can see the hex code for this is just 0000. And I'm going to hit OK. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as comp one and I'm just going to hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is drag in my clip that I'm going to be using so mine's just called scope clip yours would be called obviously whatever you saved it as and i'm then just gonna drag and drop it onto my timeline now i'm gonna go through the clip and find the point that i got the kill that i want to use for this effect so ideally it's going to be a point where you're using a sniper rifle and you go into the scope and you get a kill something just like this i think i'm going to use the next one because i was in the scope a little bit longer uh, i go into the scope get the kill and then come back out again so that's the sort of clips you're going to want to be going for so i'm just going to come to the beginning of where i want the clip to start so i'm going to say somewhere around here i'm going to select the clip and i'm going to press alt and open square bracket just like that to trim my clip down and then i'm going to drag my playhead all the way to the beginning of my composition and press the open square bracket to snap it to the beginning and i'm going to go through and find the point where i want my clip to end which is going to be after the kill just like something like that and then i'm going to press alt and the close square bracket to cut the end of the clip off so i'll quickly play the clip for you so you can see what the raw version that we're going to start off with is And there you go, as you can see, it's just a super simple clip, just one kill. And now we can get started with adding our effects. So for the first one, we're gonna go for a 3D scope effect. So I'll put an example of what that looks like on screen now. And to do that, all we're gonna want to do is come down to our clip and go to the point where we first go into the scope. So that's gonna be, you can navigate up and down frame by frame using the page up and page down keys on your keyboard. So I'm gonna keep pressing page down until I come into the scope. And you're gonna wanna wait until the, the whole scope is visible. So something like this, rather than you know starting here, for example, wait until the full scope is visible. So that's gonna be this frame right here. And I'm gonna press Control Shift D on my keyboard to split the layer. As you can see, make sure you have the layer selected when you click that. And then I'm gonna go forwards in time to the point where I get the kill and come back out of the scope. And I'm gonna use page up and page down to find the exact point when that is. So that's the last frame in the scope that's coming out of it. So I'm gonna again, select this clip, Control Shift D to split it. So you can see now we have the clip before, the clip during the scope and the clip afterwards. So for the 3D effect, we're gonna to want to mask out our scope. So I'm going to make sure I'm selected on this middle layer, which is the one where we're in the scope. And I'm going to come up to the top here to the toolbar. If you don't see it, window, make sure you have uh, tools enabled. Otherwise, that's what it'll look like. So window, tools, and then you'll see here, hover over the rectangle tool, choose the ellipse tool, and then find somewhere on the screen and click and then hold shift and drag out and you'll make a perfect circle mask. So I'm gonna drag out to the point where I feel like it's just big enough and I'm gonna let go. And then I'm gonna press V on my keyboard to bring the selection tool back out and I'm gonna drag this mask into the middle of my scope. So I want it to be somewhere like this. I think that's slightly too big because it's hanging off both edges. You don't want that to happen. If it does, you can just press control T and you'll be able to scale it. So I'm gonna scale it down by clicking one of the corners then holding shift to maintain aspect ratio just like this. And I'm gonna scale it so that it just fits on screen like that and then press v again and then drag it to the middle so you can see this anchor point is going to be the dead center of the mask so i'm going to drag it so that that is dead center in the clip as well just like that and you can see now we have a mask of our scope and it's showing nothing else around it if you want you can come down to the mask hit the little down arrow and you'll see mask feather and you can do a feather like this if you want to do something like that i'm not going to feather mine i'm just going to leave it as it is but if you want to that's an option that you have and then to add the 3d i'm going to click this little button here 
here underneath the cube on the layer with my scope masked on it. So I'm going to click that little box and that's going to give me some extra control so that now I can do 3D things with it. If you don't see the little box, press F4 on your keyboard and you'll swap between the different options. So you're going to want to make sure that you're on this version. You can also click down here, it says toggle switches and modes and make sure that you can see, you know, the little cube icon, which is then going to turn this layer into a 3D layer. And I'm going to zoom into my timeline, come to the beginning of my clip. And from this point onwards, it's completely up to you. But if you come down to the transform options, you'll see all the different options that we have. So we have scales, so you can zoom in and out like that. We have X rotation, which will be sort of a flip like this. You have the Y rotation, which is kind of like a swivel and the Z rotation, which is going to be just like similar to your normal rotation. And that's basically all you're going to need. So I'm going to bring my scale back to 100. And from this point onwards, yeah, you can basically do whatever you want. So if I wanted to, I could put my scale down to something like, I don't know, 10, add a keyframe by hitting this little stopwatch, bring it forwards in time to the last frame of this of this clip right here. So you can see that's the frame where it will show the clip above. That's the last frame of this clip. And then I could bring it up to something like that. And you'll see now over time, as you play the clip, it's animated. And that's essentially how you're gonna make all the changes to the rotations and the scales and whatever else you wanna do with it. So basically you have completely free reign. What I'm gonna do is start off with my scale at, I'm gonna go for something like, I think zero. I'm going to add a keyframe for that. Make sure that's on the beginning, the first frame of the master clip. So I'm going to just make sure my keyframe's right at the beginning. Going to head to the end. So this is the last frame of this clip. I'm going to put the scale to something like what? So I want it to be 180. I think that looks good. Something like that. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to keyframe my Y and Z rotation, both at zero. Actually, I'll make my Z rotation something more. We'll go minus 15. And then I'm going to head forwards in time to the final frame. I'm going to make my Y rotation 360 because I want my scope to do this. So if I change this to 360, you'll see it will change the multiplier here to one. So if I enter, you'll see, look, there you go. The multiplier has now turned to one. And essentially that basically means it's done one rotation, one full rotation, hence 360 degrees. You'll see if I go back in time, you'll see it's doing this sort of rotation. So it's scaling up and rotating in. And then I want my Z rotation to go to positive 15. So you'll see now we've got this sort of starts off small and as it comes in it's going to do this sort of effect. So I'll play that for you now. And there you go. So I think that that's actually a little bit too long. I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually I'm going to cut that clip in half. So so I'm going to select all these keyframes and drag them to my playhead just like that. And then come to the clip above, press Control Shift D to split it, get rid of that, and then grab these two clips and bring them back over to this one. So you can see now there's no gap between. It goes straight from outside the scope into the scope. And I'll play that now. And there you go, that's what that looks like. Now that looks cool, but the movement is linear. So it's starting off and it's not changing speed the entire way through. I think we can make it look better by changing the speed of the animation. So I'm gonna just press U on this clip and it'll bring up all of our keyframes. I'm gonna select all of them and press F9. And now if I play this back, You may not notice much of a difference, but it starts off slower, gets super fast, and then slows back down at the end again. That's just the default. I think it's called Easy Ease in After Effects, but we can obviously change that in the graph editor, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with already. So I'm going to select the scale, and I'm going to go into the graph editor. And essentially what the graph editor is, is a way that I can change the speed of the animation using this graph. So you'll see it starts off slow, gets faster, 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 and then slows back down again. Now what I want to do is kind of the opposite. I want it to start off far, so I'm just going to click this keyframe down here and drag this arm up so that it's going to start off quite quickly. And then I want it to slow down in the middle. So I'm going to drag this one down, something like that. Let me move this one up a little bit. There you go, something like that. So it's going to start off fast and then slow down and then become really fast again. So you'll see if I play that. You can see it comes to about the midpoint here and then it doesn't really change size and then towards the end it suddenly becomes really big and that's how i want it i'm gonna actually make this a little bit higher something like that okay so that's how i've done my scale 
Of course, you can mess around with the graph in whatever way you want it to be. So you can make it look like how you want it to look. And then I'm going to come to the Y rotation by selecting this keyframe, go into the graph editor. And then for this one, I want it to start off fast and then gradually slow down over time. So I'm going to drag this bottom one basically directly up just like this. You'll see something like that, I think is going to look fine. So you'll see it starts off really fast and then gradually slows down over time. So I'll play that back for you. There you go. As you can see, it sort of, as you can see, it sort it spins and then it lingers towards the end. So it stays straighter for longer. So you'll see the, the rotation sort of ends pretty much about this point and then you can actually see what's going on compared to before where it was still pretty much sideways. And I'm going to come back out of the graph editor, go to the Z rotation by selecting one of the keyframes and then into the graph editor. And for the Z rotation, I want it to be similar to how we had our scale. So I'm going to bring this one up and I'm going to bring this one down. So it's going to speed up, slow down in the middle and then speed up again towards the end. Now the Z rotation is our rotation where we had it at minus 15 to then positive 15. So it's going to start off, as you can see, tilting to the right, or that's actually the left, it's facing backwards and then it's gonna become straight and then towards the end it's gonna tilt in the opposite direction just like that as you can see so if i play this back that's basically our finished effect minus obviously the the aftershock from the kill so i'll show you what that looks like And there you go. I think that looks much better with our changed values there. So that is pretty much exactly how I want it to be. So for this next little segment of the video, I'm going to add some effects to the second part of the clip after you get the kill because it looks a bit bizarre coming straight out of a scope to then nothing. So I'm just going to add some effects to this last part and I'll talk you through quickly what I'm going to do. I covered these effects I'm going to use in a previous video of mine. You'll see the thumbnail on screen right now. You can go down to the description and watch that video where I covered five essential effects to add to your montages. I'm going to use the majority of those in this video as well. I'm not going to cover them in too much detail because obviously I've already gone over them. So if you want to watch that video where I actually explain how to use each of them in detail, check that out because you're going to need it to make this effect look more appealing. So I'm going to add an effect called optics compensation to do that. Come over to the effects and type in optics and you'll see it here. If you have Video Copilot's FX console plugin, I'll leave a link in the description, it's completely free. You can just select your clip, press Control space, and then search optics, and you'll see it there, optics compensation, and add it that way. And I'm essentially just gonna reverse the lens distortion, come in that much, and keyframe it, and then go forwards in time, and drop it back down to zero. So you'll see it comes out into the kill, and then does that. And now I've added the optics compensation. I'm gonna add brightness and contrast. I'm gonna whack the brightness up to 100, something like that. Keyframe that, and then come across to where I ended the optics and drop that back to zero. And I'm gonna do the same with a Gaussian blur as well. Whack that at like 20, keyframe that, go to the end and whack it on zero. And there you go. So if I quickly play that for you, you'll see the second part when you come out of the scope blends a bit better with the effect in the scope, if that makes any sense. You'll see what I mean. So you can see it comes out and then the almost zoom in here almost matches the clip as you come out you can see it zoomed in and it flashes and then goes back to normal so like i said all of these effects were covered in one of my previous videos which you can check out with the link in the description and learn how to use those because you're going to need them for all of these effects and i'm not going to cover them again for the next two effects i'm just going to leave them as they are so i recommend you go check out that other video to learn how to use them and then the last thing i'm going to do is add sound effects because they are very important to your montages and i recommend you add sound effects to all three of these effects that we're going to do today so i'm going to drag in a sword like clash sound effect as well as a bass whoosh just like that so I'm going to drag the base whoosh onto my timeline and I'm going to double tap L while selecting the base whoosh. So you see like that and it's going to bring up the waveform. So you can see it sort of builds up at this point. So I'm going to go to the end of my clip and have it build up and end about there. And then I'm going to drag the sword sound effect on as well. Double tap L on that to see where that starts and it's basically immediate. So we'll go there and something like that and we'll see what that sounds like. Okay, so I've completely I've mistimed the the whoosh, so I'm gonna drag that forwards to something like that. And we'll see what that sounds like. And I now I'm gonna lower the volume of those both for myself. I'm sure it's probably quieter for you in the video, but it's literally it's hurting my ears with how loud it is. So I'm gonna drop them both down to 
minus 10. You'll also have music in your montage, no doubt. So you're gonna want these to not, you know, overpower the music, but just be there as part of the montage. So if I play this through, you'll see it just adds a bit more impact to the kill. And now we'll move on to the next effect. Okay, so for the next effect, this is gonna be a super smooth zoom out and then immediate zoom back in again. So it almost looks like it's punching through the screen. And essentially to start that, just like with the previous one, you're gonna to want to mask the outline of your scope. I've left the mask from the previous one on there. If you don't know how to do the mask, I'm assuming you've skipped through the video, just copy from how I did it for the first effect. It's exactly the same, just the uh, the ellipse tool. And then for this, it's super simple. All we want to do is mess around with the scale. So I'm gonna start off with my scale at 100 and keyframe it. I'm then gonna to go to about midway through the clip, which is where it's gonna be zoomed all the way out. And I'm gonna change my zoom value to about 25 yep something like that and come to the end and i'm gonna on the last frame just before it goes to the second clip i'm gonna zoom back in and we want this to be quite big so i'm thinking something like we'll go for that something like 212 i think that looks all right so you'll see it zooms in and then zooms back out and then into the into the clip so you'll see before we do any graph editing this is what it looks like Because it, it's all right, but the timing's definitely off and we're gonna sort that now. So I'm gonna select all the keyframes, press F9, straight into the graph editor. And I'm gonna almost make like a, a U shape. So I'm gonna bring this one directly down like this. And I'm gonna bring this one directly down like this to make sort of this U shape, just like that. And now when I play that back, You can see that looks a lot better than how it did before. I think this clip's slightly too long, so I'm gonna to come to about here. I'm gonna cut it, so just like that. Bring this in, bring that back to the middle, and then drag these back to meet with the other clip, just like that, and make sure that my graph is still good, which you can see it's messed up a little bit, so I'm gonna drag this back down like that, and drag this one back down like that. And I think that'll look a bit better. There you go, you can see it's a little bit faster, just like that. And then when we add the sound effects back in, you can see that's much, much better. And that is essentially it for the, the smooth uh, zoom in and out sort of punch. I don't really know what to call it, to be honest. I think oh, you'll see a lot of CSGO editors like Nowak use this sort of effect, but of course it works in any FPS game. And you can see it also works super well with using the effects on this second clip. So as you can see, we've got the optics compensation, the brightness and contrast and the Gaussian blur from the previous effects still applied here. Of course, without them, it looks a bit bizarre. So if I disable it, you'll see this is what it looks like without. Just not quite as good as when you add those in because the transition between the scope back to the gameplay is just a bit smoother like this. So make sure you're adding effects to the clip afterwards just to, to make the transition a little bit smoother. Like I said before, you can learn how to do all of these effects in one of my previous videos, link will be in the description. And now on to our third and final scope effect. So for our third effect, this is sort of like a, a super zoom out in a way. Uh, there's not gonna be any masking involved in this one. We just need the clip split so that we have before the, you go into the scope and during the scope and then afterwards. Much the same as we had with the others, obviously no mask this time. And, this, and I'll put an example Example of what it looks like on screen right now and now to do this much like with the previous effect we're going to be using a scale so I'm going to come to the beginning of our clip first frame of it and I'm going to press s to bring up the scale I'm going to set my scale to 100 and I'm going to go about halfway through probably just a little bit further something like that I'm going to set my scale to much lower so I'm thinking something like that and then I'm going to come to the end again obviously last frame of this uh, of this little clip and I'm going to put it back to 100 so you'll see so far this is what we have it just zooms out and then comes back in again much the same as for the previous one and i'm gonna then select all of these press f9 and i'm gonna go into the graph editor and make a similar sort of u shape to we had with our previous effects so we're gonna drag this down something like this drag this out straight i want it to be a bit flatter at the bottom and drag this down just like that so we're working with it yeah a u shape that looks a bit more like that so you'll see this is what this looks like 
after, nothing too crazy, just much like with the previous effect, but you know, a little bit different. And now what we're gonna do is add an effect called motion tile. So I'm gonna select this clip, press control space on my keyboard if you have the uh, video compiler FX console installed, otherwise come over to effects and presets and search for motion and scroll down until you see uh, stylized motion tile. I'm gonna drag that on. And now all I'm gonna do is tick where it says mirror edges and I'm gonna drag the output width to the point where it fills the screen. So I wanna make sure I'm at the smallest point in my clip. So it's gonna be here with the scale, right in the dead center where it's at its lowest. So I'm gonna drag the output width so that it fits the screen. So it's gonna be something like that. 530 is what I've gone with. I'm gonna drag the output height up as well so that it fits the screen. Now these values are much too high for the moment. We're gonna be reducing those later but for the moment just to make sure it fills the whole screen we're going to leave it like that and essentially what that looks like when you render it is that so you can see it basically just replicates what's on the edges and now we're going to want to add sort of that uh kind of zoom effect. So I'm gonna right click and hit new adjustment layer and I'm just gonna trim this adjustment layer down so that it fits our clip just like that using alt and open square bracket and then alt and close square bracket just like that. And then on our adjustment layer, we're gonna add optics compensation just like we did before. So optics compensation and we're gonna to go to the beginning and keyframe the field of view at zero, come to the, the keyframe in the middle at our furthest out point in the clip and just drag our FOV up. You'll see it's actually doing the, the opposite it's what we want it to do i mean you can you know use the effect like this if you want to i want it to reverse so i want it to come this way and i'm going to put it at say i don't know we're going for 120 and then i'm going to go to the end of my clip where that last keyframe is and i'm going to keyframe it again at 120 down here and you'll see why i'm going to do that why i've done that later so you'll see so far we've got this effect Now I want to change the timing of our optics compensation keyframes on our adjustment layer. So I'm gonna select all those, press F9, come to the graph editor, and we're gonna make sort of a weird looking graph of this one. So I'm gonna drag this basically all the way out and drag our bottom one pretty much straight up to make this kind of effect. And then I'm gonna to come to the end here and drag this right up at the end and this across. So we've got this sort of weird looking uh, little hitch at the end. And that's so that it almost makes like a bounce effect. So you'll see it'll suddenly zoom in quite a lot and then towards the end of the kill, pop back out again. And I think we could probably move that back a little bit like that. Just see it's gonna zoom in and then pops back out at the last second. So you can see this frame here is a lot less sort of warped than this frame here. And it just adds a little, you can't really notice it in slow motion like this, but trust me when you watch it in normal speed, adds a little sort of bounce to it and it, it looks much better that way. Now before you'll remember when we added our motion tile, I said we did too much. So I'm gonna to come to the point where it's zoomed all the way out, come down to our scope clip and just adjust our motion tile so that it fits the screen here. This is just to avoid extra long render times or potential render errors or crashes because obviously this is putting a lot of strain on an unnecessary strain on the render because we're not actually seeing what's going on over here. So I'm going to drag this output width down to the point where it just fits the screen. So right there, I'm going to drag the output height down to the, it just fits the screen, which is going to be right there. So we're at 380 and 270. And that is essentially our finished effect. So I'm going to drag that back and preview this feed. And that is essentially how it looks. You can make it smoother by messing around with some of the keyframes and the timings and things like that. Obviously for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I would want to tinker around with this and make it fit better with the music. Obviously I'm not using any music for this tutorial, but in your montage, I'm assuming that you would have music. And then of course you still want the flashes and the blurs and the optics compensation or lens distortion on your clip after the scope as well to make that transition a bit cleaner. And to also add sound effects. So this is what it sounds like with the sound effects. And there you go, that's it. Three super simple, free and popular scope effects for your first person shooter montages. If you did enjoy this video or found it helpful, please leave a like on it. Subscribe to my channel for future videos just like this. Let me know in the comments more video ideas and other things you want me to cover, as well as join my Discord server and follow me on all my other social media. Check out my channel for more tutorials just like this one. And other than that, have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.